David Morris, how, how does space fit in with local levelling up? Well, you'd be surprised. Um, the space, space industry in the UK is not just about, you know, the, the real sexy things that people see like rockets and, um, you know, Man on the Moon, the, the Artemis programme. It's about what actually makes those projects work you know, the technology where it comes from. And we've got a lot of SMEs in the UK that are, are pioneering. You know, we've got Earth Observation SMEs that make, make satellites that um, we, we can launch and just check on what's going on in real time. So it's, it's technology like that. I mean, to give you an example, your, your car, your, your sat-nav. I mean, I can remember the first sat-navs that we used to buy from Halfords. I mean, they've come on, you know, they've come on in leaps and bounds. I mean, I hired a car the other week. And I couldn't believe it. I know it was all cameras, trickery and everything else, but it all came from satellite technology where it actually showed the car on my drive reversing out. So these are things that we actually do take for granted, but does start small and then gets very, very big. Now, the UK space sector took a bit of a PR hit, of course, when the Virgin Orbital launch didn't quite go to plan. We've now had some news about what quite went wrong. Is this, is this a setback for the United Kingdom? Well, whenever you're dealing with any launch vehicle, um, you're going to have some kind of a problem. Even when they get into orbit, there's always some kind of a problem. I believe in this case, it was a fuel filter. That's what I've read. Um, I've not seen any official reports yet, but that's what I did read. So if, if you think about the testing that goes into these rockets, you know, you're just seeing the product that goes up. That's happened quite a few times. And, um, you know, there's yet to be more to come out on that, I'm absolutely certain. But like everything else, we're, we're building rockets here in the UK to be sort of launched ter terrestrially and vertically into orbit from, from our shores or around our shores. So, you know, we, we're in a position now where, OK, it was, put it bluntly, quite a setback, but it doesn't mean it's going to stop there. It's such an interesting sector because, of course, it's something the United Kingdom was really leading on back in the 1950s. We were sort of third in the race behind the United States and the Soviet Union. We were the third country in the world to launch, you know, orbital class satellites. And then and then we just threw it all away. Uh, are we now really getting back up there with the big guys? Is there a possibility here that the UK can really excel? I think that... In, in all honesty, you're right what you're saying about 1950s when we had our own launch pads in Woomera and, um, you know, one of my uncles was out there all them years ago in the 1950s watching things going on. So, you know, we, we did sort of miss a trick where we stepped back and let the Americans and the Russians basically fight it out in the Cold War with all the resources they had and all the technological advances that they were doing. But, you know, we still did have scientists, British scientists working on those projects that have led us to where we are today. So we're just trying to sort of claim back some of that territory in the, res in the respect of using the technology that we did have in the 1950s, which is still valid and still current, albeit updated, to take it a stage further and obviously get the UK back into the space race.